Hi there. Welcome to Module 10, Corporate Social Responsibility. Now, this is also one key aspect of your syllabus where the examiner is definitely every sitting going to set some questions on in relation to corporate social responsibility. So after going through this module, you should be able to understand a concept of corporate social responsibility. You should be able to understand or explain the basic elements of the corporate social responsibility policy. You should be able to explain the stances of corporate social responsibility. Then you should be able to state the limitations and approaches to corporate social responsibility. So these are what you should be able to do in that order. But what is corporate social responsibility? What is corporate social responsibility? Corporate social responsibility can be defined as an organization's obligation to maximize positive stakeholders' benefits while minimizing the negative effects of its action. So the idea of corporate social responsibility spans from the fact that uh, organizations occupy large parts of, an organiz uh, of the society and as such they are not only responsible to their, to their owners, that is the shareholders, but they are also responsible to the other community or the general public in that order. In other words, corporate social responsibility simply means that organizations don't exist to just make profit for the owners. Rather, the organization also exists in order to improve the environment, improve the life of other stakeholders and individuals whose, whose life will be impacted or affected either positively or negatively by the operations of the business. Now, so why is corporate strategy important and then when organizations want to design a corporate strategy policy what are some of the elements that should be included in a corporate social responsibility so when we say an organization is undertaking a corporate social responsibility is it only about building hospitals is it only about employing uh, people from a certain community or from a certain from the country if we say the organization is practicing corporate social responsibility is it about giving back to the environment or paying its taxes or whatsoever what are really some of the things that are included in corporate social responsibility the first one is staff developments via training and education so if an organization spends money in order to train its staff in order to develop its staff in order to educate and advance its staff it is part of corporate social responsibility because remember if they use money to train staff they use money to develop the staff they are using shareholders money so directly what we, they are using is that they are misusing, quote unquote, the shareholders fund. But it is something that the organization undertakes so that in the long term, the organization will uh, gain competitive advantage. Two, provides equal opportunity. So there has to be an equal opportunity statement where there is equal opportunity available to all, or to all employees within the organization, equal opportunity available to other stakeholders of the organization in that order. Third has to do with written anti-discrimination policy. So there has to be a written anti-discrimination policy that we are not going to discriminate between Muslim, between Christians. We are not going to discriminate between Airways, Gans, Fanti, Ashantis in that order. So there is not going to be any racial discrimination by the organization. It provides equal opportunity to people irrespective of their background, irrespective of their ethnicity, irrespective of even their belief system in that order. Then another thing is also a commitment that the organization is going to be reporting on corporate social responsibility. That, you know, it, it, is, it is part of the statement of the organization that uh, at the end of the year, after preparing financial statement, there has to be also a statement on corporate social responsibility. That is a statement explaining the various activities that organization has undertaken throughout the year in which is not really the core activities of the organization or which is not part of the core activities of the organization but the various things that organization has done in order to restore the environment, in order to improve upon the environment, in order to provide a positive impact upon the environment. Then policies for restricting the use of what? child labor in that other very key aspect then commitment to the protection of the local environment so obviously laws must be obeyed okay by organization but the 
corporate social responsibility go further and say that organizations should go further than prescribed by law so that they become what good corporate citizens. So yes, there are laws there that there is a way businesses must be done. They must pay their taxes in that order. But beyond payment of taxes to the government, with the corp uh, organizations to act as good corporate citizens must go beyond what has been stated in the law to do something beyond it. So if companies pay taxes, it's good because it will help the government to undertake infrastructure processes, projects in order to provide factor or factors of production to companies. But what we are saying here is that organizations must go beyond those laid down principles and do something further in order to improve the entire environment. Example of these will include releasing less uh, pollution and greenhouse effects than permitted so that the local population and the world resources are safeguarded. So if for instance by law I was telling you about uh, uh, issues about environmental factors, about environmental uh, policies, when I was talking about pistol module, that uh, carbon trading or how much uh, uh, carbon dioxide or how much uh, toxic gas that can be emitted into the atmosphere in some countries is limited, all right? So even though laws have been laid out that you can emit this amount, organizations must go further to find out how they can even reduce how much, how the limit has been provided. So if they say you can reduce 500, you can produce or you can emit 500, organizations must take into consideration or put in place policies that can enable them to even emit less than that, about 350. That will mean that the organization is what? Taking action to protect the environment. Yeah. Offer enhanced welfare and training opportunity to its employees, then support local charities in that order. So these are what we talk about when we talk about the contents or elements in relation to what? Corporate social responsibility. But this is the big question. What are the advantages of corporate social responsibility? If organizations undertake this, they go beyond what is stated in the law, they give back to the society, they try to protect the environment, they build schools in the, in the environment, they train and develop people, they provide scholarship for students and employees, then what kind of advantage do they stand to gain? One, goodwill and reputational improvement yes it, it, it increases the reputation of the company it improves the uh, organization so people now recognize this organization that oh Charlie this company is doing well this company is being responsible that will add value to the company because remember goodwill and reputation are very valuable assets of organizations having a good reputation and having a goodwill mean that the company is going to become more profitable in the long term Brand strengthening and not protection. When the company is socially responsible, it strengthens the brand. It, it improves upon the brand. People will hear about it because once the company undertakes some of those corporate social responsibilities, it is going to be covered by the media. So it will be going in the news, it will be on the radio, it will be in the newspapers, it will be on TV. So people are going to now look at the brand to hear about the brand and that will also increase uh, the, the, the brand in that order. Differentiation so as to attract particular customers talented employees and high class of uh, collaborators and the low cost that is using or saving energy or less waste in that order. So these are some of the uh, advantages or merits of corporate social responsibility. So it increases the sales of the organization, it increases the profitability of the organization, it increases the goodwill of the organization. The organization is going to attract some uh, kind of investors who are responsible or who are sensitive to environmental protection in that order. So these are what we refer to as advantages, importance or merits of corporate social responsibility. The next thing we want to discuss is about stances of corporate social responsibility. Now, what are stances of corporate social responsibility? These refers to the approaches that organizations take to corporate social responsibility. So, different organizations take different approaches when it comes to corporate social responsibility. So, we want to look at the various approaches that are available in that order. Johnson's Coast and Whittington, back to them again, uh, identify four corporate social responsibility stances. The first one is that organizations approach, organizations behavior towards corporate social responsibility can be one, laissez-faire stance. That, is, that can also be referred to as short-term 
uh, shareholders' interests. This is where the organization is limited, okay? They minimize whatever responsibility they have to undertake. They just act according to the law, and then they believe that their interest is to satisfy their shareholders' objective. So the, the grounds here would be that going beyond it can challenge what government authority in that order. So it is a minimalist approach to respond to demands of the law, but will not undertake or uh, will not undertake to comply with any or uh, less substantial rules of conduct. What the laissez-faire approach is about is that we don't really care about the environment. What the law says is what we're going to do. We're going to follow the law. If the law says we're going to pay tax, we should pay tax. If the law says if we destroy the environment, we should put it back. But that is what we're going to do. We are not going to willingly undertake anything because we are protecting the interests of our shareholders. Now, this is a short-term approach because uh, it, it, you are just looking at the short-term because you're not looking at the long-term in that order. But that is a stance. That is a position that an organization can take. The next one is called the enlightened self-interest. This is a long-term shareholder's interest. Now, the wider view of ethical responsibilities enhances the organization's image. The cost of undertaking such responsibilities may be just essential promotional expenditure. This can prevent a buildup of social and political pressure for legal uh, regulation. So, with a self-enlightened interest, it's more or less like a long-term approach. So, this is where companies like Guinness Ghana Limited, companies like maybe EcoBank, who will sponsor the Black Stars in that order. So, what they are doing is that, in a way, it's a promotional thing. So, they are providing finance to them, they are helping them, but it is a long-term thing. You can't see the results now, but in the long term, it increases the reputation of these companies, it increases the brand of these companies in that order, okay? That is an example of the self-interest uh, enlightened uh, organizational strategy approach. Then the next one is multiple stakeholder obligation. This is where the organization believes that uh, it has multiple stakeholders and so must protect the interests of stakeholders or must satisfy the interests of other stakeholders. So with this, the organization tries to go beyond the law. With this, the organization tries to not even look at the long-term uh, uh, benefits of these policies, but just to say that we have a lot of stakeholders. How can we satisfy each of these stakeholders? That is what the multiple stakeholder obligation is about. And the last one is shaper of society. Largely concern of the public sector organization and charities a set wide responsibility towards stakeholders. So these are the stances of uh, uh, corporate social responsibility. Then the next thing we want to talk about is limitations of corporate social responsibility or limits of corporate social responsibility. Now basically you will agree that uh, corporate social responsibility is not a uh, something that a business must do. The reason is that the business is not there to provide scholarship for people, to provide, to build schools. That is not why the business was established. The business was established in order to maximize the wealth or, or yes, to maximize the wealth of the shareholders, make profit for the shareholders of the business. So in making or finding out or discussing whether it is good for businesses to undertake corporate social responsibility or not, there are various thoughts that we are going to uh, discuss here in that order in relation to arguments against corporate social responsibility. That is, there are people who have written, who have stated, who have raised arguments that corporate social responsibility should not be a duty, should not be something that a business must undertake, even though it has a lot of advantages, a lot of importance, it, has, it adds a lot of value to the organization. One of these thought leaders who have written against or who have argued against corporate social responsibility is called Elton Friedman. Now, Elton Friedman states that there is one and only one social responsibility of the business. That is, to use its resources and engage in activity designed to increase profits. So according to Elton or Milton Friedman, he believes that the organization has only one responsibility, and that is how they can use the resources that has been entrusted to them by the shareholders and to make profit and to maximize the wealth of the shareholders. So if that is their objective, they must not undertake anything. To, do, to be able to understand that well, Milton uh, Friedman says that businesses do not have responsibility, only people have responsibility. So the business is not a human being, so they are not responsible to anybody. Two, these employers may have charity of their own. 
okay, of their own. So that is also another limitation of, of, of their corporate social responsibility because if you are using shareholders' money to undertake something that they didn't employ you for, why not pay them dividend because they may have their own charities so that they can satisfy those charities by themselves. That is the argument of uh, Milton Friedman and I think it's reasonable to some extent. When management, as according to the definition of corporate social responsibility, it means they act in some way that is not in the interest of the shareholders of the company because corporate social responsibility, they go beyond what the law has stated, they go beyond what they are fundamentally required to do and they undertake something else, using shareholders money, spending shareholders money on something that is not necessarily the core reason for the establishment of the company. And then the last one is that if management undertake any corporate social responsibility, then they are generally spending employers' money on purposes other than those they have been authorized to. The money that shareholders give to management is for the running of the business, not for the giving of charities, not for the giving of scholarship, not for the building of schools in the community. So what Ant, uh, Milton Friedman is saying is that the organization has one and only one responsibility, and that is to use the resources of the organization in order to help the organization to make profit and maximize the wealth of the shareholders. The second argument against corporate social responsibility is that the maximization of wealth is the best way that a society can benefit from the business activities. That is, maximizing the wealth has the effect of increasing tax revenue, whether to the state, to disperse on, on socially desirable objectives. This argument simply means that organizations must not undertake any corporate social responsibility because if they are maximizing the wealth of the shareholders, it means more profit will be earned. Once more profit is earned, it means more taxes will be paid to the government. And if they are paying taxes to the government, then government is responsible for the environment. Government can provide those social amenities, infrastructure facilities to the society. Second is that maximizing shareholders' value has a trickle-down effect on the other uh, members of the society. The reason is that, as I mentioned earlier, some of these shareholders may have their own charities, may have their own foundation. So when you are maximizing their wealth, providing them or paying them more dividend, they can use that money to undertake their own charity. You don't necessarily have to use that money to undertake a charity that they are not really interested in. And the last one is that many companies shares are owned by pension funds whose ultimate beneficiaries may not be wealthy anyway in the society. So if you are using shareholders money and some of these shareholders are by pension funds or are co corporate uh, organizations who are managing pension funds, people who are poor, people who are going on pension their funds. So if you are now using pension funds as shareholders money to undertake corporate social responsibility, then what are you doing? The people are already broke, they don't have much money, you are still using their money to give to other broke people within the uh, 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 environment or within the country. So these are some arguments, huge arguments against corporate social responsibility. But even though there are these arguments there, every organization is socially responsible because they know the value and shareholders understand that if companies undertake these social responsibility, it adds value to the company, it increases sales of the organization, and over a long period of time, it increases the value and maximizes the wealth of the shareholders. Then the next slide we want to talk about is in relation to approaches to social responsibility. That is the various approaches that government take in relation to how they react on social responsibility. The first one is the proactive uh, approach or strategy. Now, there's a strategy where the business follows uh, and is prepared to take full responsibility for its action. So, uh, an organization that is having a proactive strategy to be socially responsible means that the organization will be ready to take full responsibility for all its action. So, when a company discovers a fault in a product, it will not wait for uh, customers to begin to complain. Proactive strategy means it will recall all those products and mend or solve all those faults in that product. That is called the proactive strategy. 
The next one is the reactive strategy. This involves allowing the situation to continue unresolved until the government or the public or consumer group finds about it. So with a reactive strategy, it is where the organization is not socially responsible. In other words, when there is a problem, they wait. They don't talk about it until government comes after them, until pressure groups come after them, until customers find out about the problem before they will begin to act. It means they are having a reactive strategy. But proactive strategy is where the organization is spotting out like an eagle eye. So they are spotting out to find out if there is anything, they even take action against it prior before it is found out or it is identified. Then the next one is the defense strategy. This involves minimizing or attempting to avoid additional obligation arising for a, from a particular problem. So if the organization is facing some problem like a product failure in, in that order, like for instance how Samsung's, I think, S8 or Note 8, I don't know, I've forgotten the brand itself, but was having problem that when they are, it's being charged on airplanes, they end up melting and other stuff. Uh, defensive strategy means that you pause the sales of those devices and recollect all those devices and then you, you find out to solve the problem. That is defensive strategy. Trying to find out ways that you can avoid additional obligations so that when you continue to sell the devices that you are having, you are going to continue to have those problems. So you pause the sales of those devices so that you do not have any additional problem in that order. And the last one is the accommodation strategy. This approach involves taking responsibility for the action probably when one of the following happens. Encouragement for social interest, perception that a failure to act will result in a government intervention. So this is the accommodation strategy is where the organization stands and say that okay, when there is a problem they ask themselves, what will be the effect on the, on the business? If it will affect the business negatively, then the organization will react. If it won't affect, then the organization will just sit down there in that order. Now, when it comes to uh, corporate social responsibility, one of the key aspects of corporate social responsibility is what we refer to as environmental management accounting. So I'm going to borrow the thoughts of ACCA Global to explain this concept shortly. Now, the global profile of environmental issue has risen significantly during the past two decades particularly in part, in, part of, in part by major incidents such as the Bhopal Chemical Leak in 1984 and the Exxon uh, Vandals oil spill. These events received worldwide media attention and increased concerns over major issues such as global warming, depletion of non-renewable uh, resources and loss of natural habitats. So there are a lot of cases that have come up that has brought uh, uh, events that has brought sensitivity to the various uh, individuals, to various individuals and corporate organizations around the world. The recent one is about uh, VW, Vogelwagen, the issues about the oil split into uh, the Amazon also in that order. That one brought about the issues about how environmentally responsible they are because if you spill, the oil spills into uh, a river like that, that means that you are affecting people life because people are using that river, they are drinking it, there are animals that are drinking from that river, trees and other ones who also die as a result of those spills in that order. But to discuss issues about environmental reporting, we are going to look at the, the fact that environmental reporting applies to major areas of the organization. It applies to product pricing, it applies to the budgeting of the organization, it applies to environmental or investment appraisal, it applies to calculating or determining the cost of a project that organization is undertaking in that order. What we are saying here is that when an organization is undertaking any strategy or, uh, or what, or policy, the organization must take into consideration the effect of that strategy on the entire environment so that the organization can be seen as socially responsible in that order. So these are what you have to understand when it comes to corporate social responsibility. You have to be ready to answer some questions in relation to this aspect of the syllabus because every sitting, the examiner is going to ask some questions on corporate social responsibility in that order. And I'll see you in the next module.